Everyone's talking about economic collapse, but what if we're looking at it all wrong? What if what feels like chaos is actually transformation? Today, we're diving into fresh data from the world's top financial institutions that suggests we might be on the cusp of something extraordinary. Not an ending, but a new beginning. Hello, my curious cosmic explorers of economics. Theodore here, ready to guide you through what might be the most fascinating economic transformation of our lifetime. We've got expert analysis diving deep into reports from the IMF, World Bank, and more, uncovering the hidden opportunities in what many see as crisis. Get ready to challenge everything you think you know about our global economic future. So, listener, we've got a mountain of reports here on the global economy. Fannie Mae, World Bank, even the IMF, the big leagues. And the question on everyone's mind, are we teetering on the edge of a global economic meltdown? Or are things maybe, just maybe, not as gloomy as the headlines make them seem? Expert speaker ready to dig in and see what we're really dealing with. Let's unearth some economic truths. It's rarely simple, this global economy of ours, but these reports, they offer some intriguing clues. Clues, huh? Well, let's start with something a little closer to home. The U.S. housing market. This Fannie Mae report, I gotta be honest, it's got me a little puzzled. They're projecting U.S. home prices to climb by 3.6% in 2025. Sounds pretty rosy, right? But then they go ahead and downgrade the growth estimates for 2024. What's the deal with that? Mixed signals much. Deciphering economic indicators, it can sometimes feel like you're learning a whole new language. But in this case, here's the thing. The U.S. economy, it's moderating, yeah, but it's not down for the count. Not even close. There's a fascinating push and pull happening right now. You've got talks of a potential recession, sure, but then you've also got this crazy low inventory. Simply put, not enough homes to meet demand. And what happens when demand outstrips supply? Prices go up, up, up. Classic supply and demand, oh, economics oh. 101, but there's got to be more to it than that, right? Oh, absolutely. A strong labor market plays a crucial role, too. Even with that slight uptick in unemployment we saw recently, people feel pretty secure in their jobs overall. And when people feel secure, they're more likely to make those big purchases, like, say, a house, even with interest rates being what they are. Makes sense. And speaking of interest rates, Fannie Mae, they're predicting those will keep climbing, aren't they? Why is that? You're right on the money. They are projecting further increases, which, yeah, could tap the brakes on sales a bit. Think about it. Suddenly having to shell out more every month for your mortgage gives you pause, doesn't it? But here's the twist. Higher rates, they can actually be a boon for refinance activity. Could be good news for some homeowners. See? Economics, always full of surprises. Like a game of economic dominoes. One thing impacts another, and then another, and, well, you get the picture. So while things might be a tad turbulent in the U.S. housing market, it's not necessarily a sign of the apocalypse. But zoom out a bit. What about the global picture? Because I got to say, this World Bank report on the Middle East and North Africa, it's a little concerning. They're saying economic uncertainty there. It's double, double what we're seeing in other regions. They even went as far as to quantify the impact of conflict, saying GDP per capita could have been a whopping 45% higher in those countries ravaged by conflict. 45%. It's a stark and sobering reminder that conflict, it casts a long shadow, not just on the immediate region, but on the global economy as a whole. That uncertainty, it ripples outward, impacting investment decisions, trade flows, you name it. It's a sobering thought, for sure. Mm -hmm. So we've got uncertainty swirling around, and then, of course, there's the big bad inflation monster lurking in the shadows. Mm -hmm. Or is it a monster? How worried should we really be about inflation? Global inflation, it's definitely a factor, no doubt about it, but, and this is a big but, there's a nuance here that often gets lost in the shuffle. Long-term inflation expectations, they remain remarkably stable. Unlike, say, what we saw back in the tumultuous 1970s. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Time out for a quick econ lesson. What exactly are long-term inflation expectations, and why should we care? Think of it as the collective gut feeling about future inflation. It's how businesses, consumers, even your Uncle Bob who clips coupons, how they anticipate prices will behave in the long run. If everyone and their dog thinks prices are going to skyrocket next year, they'll act accordingly today. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, you see. 
But here's the thing. Right now, even with all the immediate concerns, people aren't running for the hills. Convinced hyperinflation is right around the corner. Okay, that does make me feel a little better. Uh. So no need to break out the disco balls and bell bottoms just yet. We're not headed for a repeat of the 1970s. Not quite. And the IMF, in their World Economic Outlook, they actually emphasize this very point. Chapter 2, in particular, it highlights how the current situation, it's got a different flavor than crises of the past. They're suggesting, and I'm inclined to agree, that we might be past peak inflation, and things are, dare I say, stabilizing. Okay, now that is a glimmer of good news. But with all this talk of uncertainty, global this and global that, it's kind of hard not to feel, well, a little uncertain myself. I don't blame you. What I'm wondering is, what can regular people like me actually do in the face of these massive economic forces swirling around us? It's easy to feel powerless. And that's where things get really interesting. Because you, me, the everyday person, we actually have more influence than we might think. That IMF report on structural reforms, chapter three specifically, it hints at this. Public opinion. It can be a powerful driver of change when it comes to economic policy decisions. Hold on. Are you saying we're not just strapped into this economic roller coaster holding on for dear life? We can actually steer this thing. Tell me more. That's the spirit. When everyday folks like us understand the why behind those policies, even the tough ones, the ones that require a little sacrifice in the short term, we're far more likely to support them. It's about transparency, feeling like we're all in this together, working towards a common goal. Knowledge is power. The more we understand about how this whole crazy economic engine works, the better equipped we are to navigate it. And speaking of knowledge, let's talk about something that feels straight out of science fiction. AI and its impact on the stock market. This IMF report on AI in capital markets, especially Chapter 3, really caught my eye. It's a hot topic, that's for sure, and one that's capturing imaginations left and right. To say the least. It seems like everyone in their Wall Street broker is turning to AI these days, making trades, assessing risk, the works. Part of me is fascinated and part of me is, <laughs> well, it's a little unnerving if I'm being honest. So what's the deal? Are we headed for a future where robots are playing with our 401ks? The question everyone's asking, isn't it? While we're not quite at the point where Wall Street is run by robots, things are definitely changing fast. The IMF report does a good job, I think, of laying out both the dazzling potential and the potential pitfalls of all this AI in finance. So it's not as simple as saying AI is going to save the markets or AI is going to crash the markets. Mm, not at all. It's far more nuanced than that. On the one hand, AI has the potential to make everything more efficient, faster. Imagine lightning fast algorithms sifting through mountains of data in the blink of an eye, spotting trends, risks, opportunities. It could revolutionize how we invest. Sounds almost too good to be true. There's got to be a butt coming, right? Of course. While the possibilities are exciting, we can't ignore the valid concerns. Transparency, for one. These AI algorithms, these lines of code that can make or break fortunes, how do they actually work? Can we be sure they're making fair and unbiased decisions? Decisions that impact real people's lives. Big difference between an algorithm picking out your next Netflix binge and one deciding how your retirement savings are invested. Exactly. And then there's the whole issue of market manipulation. What happens when someone somewhere figures out how to game the system with these super powered AI algorithms, create artificial price swings, exploit loopholes we haven't even thought of yet? OK, now that's a little unnerving. Sounds like a plot for a financial thriller. It just goes to show as technology leaps forward, we need to be incredibly mindful think things through, anticipate potential downsides, and work proactively to mitigate those risks. Sounds like the future of finance is going to be a wild ride. Buckle up. We're just getting started. We've covered a lot of ground already. U.S. housing market, uncertainty in the Middle East, the rise of AI and finance. Is our world falling apart at the economic seams? Always. And sometimes the best way to understand the lay of the land, the economic land that is, is to figure out what exactly is shaping it, you know? You're speaking my language. And speaking of shaping things, before we took a moment to regroup, we were talking about the power of good old-fashioned public opinion in influencing how economic policy is shaped. Yeah. You were saying the IMF report really highlighted that. And honestly, that's not something you hear every day. It's actually kind of empowering to think we're not just like along for the ride, you know? It's a huge point. 
what the IMF found is that when people, everyday people, when we get why certain policies are put in place, even if they're tough, even if they mean maybe tightening the belt a bit in the short term, we're much more likely to get behind them. It's all about transparency, about feeling like we're all in this together, right? Building a better economic future for everyone. Makes total sense. You're more likely to roll up your sleeves and get on board if mm -hmm. you feel like you're part of the solution, not just being told what to do, right? But how do you actually go about building that understanding, especially with economics? Let's be real. It can be a little dense sometimes. Mm -hmm. Not exactly the most exhilarating dinner table conversation. It's all about communication, making these complex economic issues, making them relatable, you know, explaining them in a way that resonates with people with their lives. So it's got to be more than just like rattling off statistics and dry economic theory, right? Yeah. It's about telling a story. Exactly. Stories, they have this incredible power to connect with people on an emotional level, to make them actually care about these issues, issues that they might otherwise just tune out. When you can draw a line between, say, some abstract economic principle and its impact on a real person, a community, a family, well, that's when you create a narrative that sticks. And trust has got to be a big part of it too, right? I mean, people are much more likely to listen to a source they trust, a source they feel isn't trying to sell them something, especially these days, right? It's like mm -hmm. everyone's got an angle. Trust is everything. And that's why it's so important for institutions like the IMF, the World Bank, these organizations that are known for you know, being on the level to really take the reins when it comes to getting the information out there to get people talking, but in a way that's constructive, productive. We need to move beyond the political back and forth, the talking heads shouting at each other, and get down to brass tacks, finding real solutions based on evidence that actually make a difference. So it's about taking these conversations, these economic conversations, out of the ivory towers and bringing them down to earth, right? Yeah. Making them relevant to the everyday person. Exactly. Democratizing this knowledge, that's key. We need to give people the tools, the information, to understand the forces that shape their lives, to become active participants in shaping their own economic destinies, not just passive bystanders. Love that. It's about having a seat at the table, being part of the conversation, not just being handed a menu and told, this is what you're getting. But let's bring this all back around to the question of the hour, shall we? Is our world falling apart at the economic seams? We've looked at the U.S. housing market. We've talked about the uncertainty in the Middle East and North Africa, the rise of AI and finance, the power of us regular folks to make our voices heard. Whew, that's a lot. So what's the verdict? Global economic meltdown. Are we doomed? Well, it's important to keep in mind that the global economy, it's kind of like this incredibly complex, constantly moving machine, right? There's always going to be bumps in the road, challenges, uncertainties. It's just the nature of the beast. Okay, that's a little reassuring, I guess. So you're saying we don't need to hit the panic button every time the headlines scream about a recession or the market takes a dip. Exactly. Perspective is everything. Economic cycles, they're a natural part of this whole intricate dance. What matters is understanding the underlying trends and making informed decisions based on the most reliable information out there. Think of it like upgrading your smartphone. There's always that scary moment when everything goes dark during the update, but what emerges is usually better than before. That's where we are with the global economy, in that transformation phase that feels scary, but is actually progress in motion. Easier said than done sometimes. Right? Yeah. I mean, we are bombarded with information these days from every direction. It's like trying to drink from a fire hose. No doubt about it. We are living in the age of information overload. And that's exactly why it's so critical to be discerning, yeah. to cultivate that critical thinking muscle and be able to tell the good information, the reliable stuff from the noise. So it's not just about what we know, but how we know it, filtering out the signal from the noise. Now you're getting it. And that, my friend, is precisely why these deep dives are so important. We're giving our listeners a curated look at the global economic landscape, cutting through the noise and getting down to the nitty gritty. It's like having a guide, a trusty map and compass to navigate the often perplexing world of economics. But even with a guide, it's easy to get lost in the weeds. What are some key trends our listeners should be paying attention to in the coming months, the coming years? What's going to shape the global economy in 2025 and beyond? Ugh. The million dollar question. Well, one trend that's impossible to ignore is the ongoing shift in global economic power. Emerging markets, especially in Asia, are stepping onto the world stage in a big way. And that's going to have a ripple effect on everything. Trade, investment, even geopolitics. Like the whole economic landscape is shifting beneath our feet. 
Exactly. And for our listeners, it's about adapting, understanding the opportunities and the challenges this shift presents. It could impact everything from where companies decide to invest their money to the kind of jobs that are in high demand. A good reminder that we're all connected, part of this big, messy global system. And speaking of interconnected systems, what about technology? We already talked about AI and finance, but what other technological advancements are shaking things up? Every day, it's like there's some new headline about a groundbreaking invention or discovery. One area that's generating a ton of buzz, and rightfully so, is the rise of green technology. As the world grapples with climate change, we're seeing a huge surge in investment in things like renewable energy, sustainable agriculture, all these eco-friendly innovations. So it's not all doom and gloom on the environmental front. There's a silver lining. There's always a silver lining. Necessity is the mother of invention, as they say. The climate crisis, while daunting, it's forcing us to completely rethink how we do things, how we power our homes and businesses, how we produce our food, how we use and conserve resources. And that's creating incredible opportunities, both for the planet and for the economy. So it's not just about saving the planet, it's about creating a more sustainable and prosperous future for everyone. Now you're talking. It's about understanding that a healthy environment and a healthy economy, they go hand in hand. Win-win. But let's not forget about the human element in all of this. We've touched upon labor markets, unemployment, this fear that robots are going to steal all our jobs. What's your take on the future of work in this rapidly changing world? It's a topic that's causing a lot of, well, anxiety is probably putting it mildly. I get it. Believe me. It's on everyone's minds. The future of work, it's changing right before our eyes. No doubt about it. And yeah, it's natural to feel a little uneasy. Automation, AI, they're changing the game. The skills that employers are looking for, they're changing. A lot of those traditional jobs, are not, well, they're not coming back. But it's not all doom and gloom. So the robots aren't going to take over the world and leave us all jobless and twittering our thumbs. Not quite. Yeah. While some jobs will definitely be, well, displaced, new ones will emerge. The name of the game is adaptability. So being willing to learn new skills, to evolve with the changing job market, that's key. 100%. And it's not just about technical skills either. Those soft skills, things like critical thinking, communication, being able to solve problems creatively and work well in a team, those are more important than ever. Those are the skills robots can't replicate so easily, right? Our secret weapon. Exactly. Those uniquely human skills, those are going to be what set us apart, what makes us valuable in a world that's becoming increasingly reliant on technology. So the future of work belongs to those who can adapt, who can roll with the punches, embrace change. You got it. Those who can think critically, solve problems creatively, and work effectively in teams, those are the folks who are going to thrive in this new environment. And it goes back to what we were talking about earlier. Information and education, those are key. We've got to equip people with the tools, with the knowledge they need to navigate this changing landscape, to not just survive, but to thrive. It's a call to action for all of us, wouldn't you say? This isn't something that just happens to us. We have a role in shaping the future. Preach. We all have a part to play. Creating a future that's more equitable, more sustainable, more prosperous. But it starts with awareness, with these conversations, with demanding better from our leaders, from ourselves. Economics, at its core, it's about people, the choices we make, how those choices play out on this big, interconnected, global stage. And the thing is, even though we're facing some real challenges, I don't know, I'm kind of feeling, I guess, a, a glimmer of hope. Like, we're not just helpless bystanders, you know? We actually have the power to shape our own economic destiny, whether it's making smart decisions with our own finances, supporting businesses that are trying to do good in the world, or speaking up and demanding better from our leaders. Every little bit counts. Absolutely. We're all part of this intricate web, and our actions, no matter how small they might seem, they have ripple effects. So we've poured over these reports, looked at the trends, analyzed the expert opinions. But the million dollar question still hangs in the air, doesn't it? Yeah. Is our world falling apart at the economic seams? Expert speaker, what's your gut telling you? Are you yeah. feeling optimistic? Cautiously optimistic? Or are we all going to be digging out our old economics textbooks and brushing up on our bartering skills? That is the question, isn't it? The one everyone wants answered. And while I don't have a crystal ball, sadly, and can't predict the future, I can say this. The global economy... It's a resilient beast, always has been. It's constantly changing, adapting, evolving in ways we can't even imagine. Are there challenges? Sure. 
geopolitical instability, climate change, technology changing at warp speed, none of that's easy to deal with. But I'm reminded of that quote by JFK. The Chinese use two brush strokes to write the word crisis. One brush stroke stands for danger, the other for opportunity. And I really believe that's true. Now more than ever, we got to be aware of the risks, absolutely, but let's not lose sight of the opportunities that come with change. I like that. Opportunity amidst uncertainty. It's about finding that spark, that innovative spirit that helps us reimagine what's possible. And you know, speaking of opportunity, it seems like one of the biggest ones, maybe the biggest one we're facing this century, is that shift in global economic power we talked about earlier. Yeah. And I, I don't just mean some numbers getting shuffled around. I mean a fundamental realignment of, well, of everything. Influence, opportunity, the whole shebang. Nailed it. Here's the thing about economic power shifts. They're like tectonic plates moving beneath our feet. Scary? Maybe. But just like those plates created the mountains and valleys we call home, these shifts are creating new peaks of opportunity. We just need to be ready to climb them. Yeah. The rise of Asia, especially China and India, it's a game changer. And for our listeners, this isn't just some abstract concept playing out on the world stage. This is going to impact their lives. Think new markets for goods and services, investment opportunities, and of course, the need for new skills. The ability to navigate different cultures, different ways of doing business. It's a whole new world out there. It really is like the map of the world is being redrawn right in front of us. And then, of course, you've got technology, which is, well, it's changing everything at a pace that's hard to even keep up with. We talked about AI and finance, but what other technological marvels are poised to, I don't know, maybe not take over the world, but at least disrupt it a bit? One field that's really got my attention, and I think it should have everyone's attention, is green technology. As we grapple with this urgent need to you know, save the planet, basically. We're seeing an explosion of creativity and innovation. Renewable energy, sustainable agriculture, ways to capture carbon and make our economies more circular. This is the part that gets me excited, folks. We're not just talking about tweaking the old economic engine. We're building a whole new vehicle. Green tech, AI, Asian markets. It's like watching multiple industrial revolutions happening at warp speed. These aren't just buzzwords anymore. This is the future, and it's happening now. It's like the challenges of climate change. They're immense, obviously, but they're also forcing us to think differently, to innovate, to create whole new industries with the potential to, well, to really make a difference, not just for the planet, but for the economy, too. Exactly. It's about realizing that a healthy environment and a healthy economy, those two go hand in hand. All right, listener, as we put a pin in this deep dive into the global economy, expert speaker got to ask. Yeah. Any final words of wisdom for our listeners as they navigate this complex and constantly shifting world? Something to ponder as they go about their day. If there's one thing I could leave your listeners with, it would be this. Never lose that sense of curiosity. The world's changing faster than ever, and the only way to keep up, to thrive even, is to stay curious. Never stop learning. Never stop asking questions. Challenge those assumptions. Be open to new ways of thinking, new ways of doing things. The future belongs to the curious. Words to live by. And on that note, listener, we'll leave you with some thought-provoking questions to keep those mental gears turning. You can find them in our show notes. Thank you, as always, for joining us on this deep dive into the global economy. Remember, stay curious, stay informed, and most importantly, stay engaged. The future is ours to create. My economics adventurers, we've covered some fascinating territory today. Sure, the global economy is changing, dramatically, but change doesn't have to mean catastrophe. In fact, often the biggest opportunities come disguised as challenges. Keep your minds open, stay curious, and remember, transformation is just progress in work clothes. I'm Theodore, reminding you that the future belongs to those who can see opportunity and uncertainty. Until next time, keep exploring the extraordinary. Mm -hmm.